We were talking earlier about people you've met, and I know, Steve, that you got to meet or kind of meet Elvis. I did. I've told the story a million times, so I don't know if I it's just, worthwhile. I, well, I just love it. So, Well, I was. it was 1971, mm -hmm. and I was opening for Anne Margaret mm -hmm. at the Hilton in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. which is n no longer there at, for good reason. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> They tore it the, down the following yeah, day. The worst comedy room. Yeah. You know, like a ceiling that's like 80 feet high. Yeah. So laughs, they, they, the laughter rose above the audience's head about two feet and stopped. And stopped. You know? But anyway, and uh, Elvis was opening the next weekend mm -hmm. and he knew Ann Margaret. So um, now it's after the show. And I know Elvis is going to come back and say hello to Ann Margaret. And so I leave my dressing room door open and... Uh, and I did my act. It's, it's 1971, so the act is not fully formed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's got a little you know, weirdness to it. Mm -hmm. And so Elvis uh, walked by and he saw me and he stopped and he said, son, you have an oblique sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came in uh -huh. and now we're talking, I'm talking with him and I know you don't, don't know what to say. And my manager was there who knew all about Sun Records, so we mm -hmm. could talk about that. And then there was a pause in the conversation. Oh, first of all, but this is the part I loved. Elvis has a guy who uh, comes up to him, to him to get him out of conversation. Says, Elvis, I'm sorry, we have to go. Mm -hmm. And in this case, he comes up, says, sorry, we have to go. And Elvis said, it's okay. <laughs> I thought, oh, man, I've been blessed. Uh -huh. So then we're talking. Then we run out of conversation. Then he said, want to see my guns? Jesus. And we said, sure. And yeah. he was a... He wasn't, he was a gun, he liked artful guns, yes. like an engraved sure. thing. And he was very cautious. He, they were loaded. And so he took out a six shooter and he opened it up and dumped all the, the bullets mm -hmm. in his hand. And before he handed me the gun to wow. look at it and I was looking at it, I'm marveling at it. Then he took out another gun, did the same thing, mm -hmm. dumped out the bullets, handed them to me. And then, the, then he pulled out from his sock yeah a derringer jesus and then opened that up dumped out the bullets handed it to me and then i'm i'm holding three guns and he's holding 16 bullets <laughs> <laughs> and i'm thinking where is elvis's guy yeah yeah <laughs> to get me out of this why won't he get, do you remember what he was wearing Yes, all white. It was Elvis Slim, and he had the all white, and he wore that big buckle that the Hilton had given him to him for, you know, <clears throat> biggest show ever in the history of the world. Right. But he was very sweet and very nice. Yeah. That, and that comes across when you well, look at the documentary. Well, that's a famous face, though, Elvis yeah. Presley. Jesus. Well, also, the reason I wanted to, because I know that you met Frank Sinatra. Yes. And who's your absolute idol. But it was at always at one of those situations where, you because I remember you told me this once, you were at a bar. And it, 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 no, it was at George Slaughter's house. Oh, George Slaughter's house. Okay. It was after a, a Sinatra Shirley MacLaine concert at the Greek Theater. Mm -hmm. And we all went back to his house, and Diana Shore was there. Mm -hmm. She was a big <laughs> fan of SCTV. Oh, great. She's going on about it, and I'm thrilled to meet Diana Shore. And she said, Hey, do you want to meet Frank? I said, Sure, sure, sure. sure. And uh, I went up to him. Now, this next part, Paul Schaefer maintains, I've made up. Mm hmm. Because he said he didn't sp he didn't speak like out of guys and dolls, and I said, well, he did though. He said, uh, I said, this is not a Martin Show. And he said, I know well of you and you're marvelous. <laughs> I know well of you. I can believe that. that. Yeah, I know well. That's of not guys. Ah, and now dolls. he didn't. Yeah. Anyway, then then he said, uh, would you like a drink? And I said, sure. He said, what are you drinking? I said, anything. <laughs> you, you're drinking, Frank. And so he turned to the bartender and said, uh, Jack Daniels. And I don't, didn't, don't, don't drink scotch, so the bartender said, uh, straight up or on the rocks. And I was nervous. I thought he said, straight up or relaxed. And I said, I'll have it relaxed. And he, Frank said, he said, straight up or on the rocks. Well, <laughs> I'd known Frank 15 <laughs> seconds, and I'd pissed him off. And he I, starts, yeah. Julie, beat the crap yeah. out of this guy. <laughs> Are you a moron? So I, good, good Frank. <laughs> now, it was, when you meet those people, it yes. is surreal. But, you know, I used to have that with Mike Nichols, and I knew him for 20 years that I was still in awe, like you talk about Carson. You're in awe of being in their presence. I had, I mean, this is someone he both have met a billion times, but uh, Lauren once asked me to go to a, he said, you know, would you like to go to a Yankee game with me? And I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. And uh, there was a playoff game on the Red Sox. And so we're, 
I get in the car and he says, um, I'm, we're picking up, I think he said we're picking up a friend. I didn't hear who he said we were picking mm -hmm. up, but he puts, you know, so I sat up front. So there was room in the back for Lauren and his friend. I set up with the driver and we start driving up and then we start to slow down and there's someone leaning against the lamppost in like a very cinematic way. And we slow down and it's Jack Nicholson. Wow. Yeah, geez. And Jack gets in the back seat and he goes, and Lauren goes, and he goes, he's like, how you doing, Lauren? He says, oh, and he says, and this is a corner of my gun. And he says, it's very nice. Just said, nice to see you. And I said, oh, so nice to see you, sir. You know, and then we're, we drive, we see the game. And my experience was, if you want to be anonymous, walk with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> because I am, my life is, I'm 6'4", I have this pastry on my head. I am immediately, like me or dislike me, everybody knows it's me. And I walk down the street and everybody knows it's me. And suddenly nobody saw me yeah. because I'm walking three feet behind Jack Nicholson. Oh, absolutely. But then the th real treat of the night, so we chatted a little bit about a few things and but didn't talk much. He mostly spoke with Lauren and then he drops me off at the end of the night and I think, well, this has been great. And I get out of the car first because I'm just going to walk. Oh, we drop Jack Nicholson off and he gets out of the car and I just said, hey, it was a real honor to meet you, you know, Jack. And he said, my boy is crazy about you. <laughs> and I said, uh, he said, I'll never forget. He said, my boy, we're standing there and Lauren's still in the car. And he goes, my boy's crazy about you. Every morning it's Conan this and Conan that. It's driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> I had no idea that even I had any, oh, God, but I just great. knew that I was an irritant in yeah. his life. And that made me very happy. Uh, very yeah. happy indeed. Um, I'm just going back a minute because I keep remembering this. Great joke. And I think it was uh, Shecky Green's joke mm -hmm. about Frank. And it might have been Don Rickles, but I think it was Shecky Green. He said, he said, and it, Frank's in the audience. He said, Frank saved my life one <laughs> night. You know this joke? No. He says, Frank saved my life one night. I was in an alley and I was getting beat up, <laughs> beat up by some guys. And Frank said, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so. And then there's the famous Rickles joke, which I'm it's story, which I'm sure mm. is true, which is Rickles asking Frank, he's like, I'm meeting, I'm dating this young girl. Could you, this young woman, it would really mean so much oh, yeah. if you just came through the lobby and, and walked through the restaurant and said hello to me in front of her. That would really help me seal the deal. And so. Frank Sinatra comes through and walks up to Rickles and his date and says, uh, hey, Don, I just want to, hey, Frank, please, I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank leaves the restaurant and then about 30 seconds later, two guys come in and pick up Rickles, <laughs> carry him out of the restaurant and dump him in the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Is that last part true? It was a it was a fountain. It was a fountain of acid. That's the part that's less yeah. funny. Wow. Frank had it constructed. So you, yeah. They killed Don Rickles. Wow. Yeah, they did. Yeah, he never lived past 1961.